Crime Cafe, your podcasting source of great crime, suspense, and thriller writing. I'm your host, Debbie Mack. And before I bring on my guest, I'll remind you that um, we have the Crime Cafe box set and Crime Cafe short story anthology for sale on my website from all retailers. Um, just give them a try. They're uh, they're, ex they're all excellent stories by really top quality writers in, in the collections. And uh, also the podcast has a Patreon page now. Oh, and uh, yes, um, just recently I posted excerpts from my third Sam McRae mystery, Riptide, and an early look at my novella, Damaged Goods. So if you support the podcast, you'll get access to those extras and all the goodies that come with contributing at whatever level you choose. So uh, just go to debbymack.com, D-E-B-B-I-M-A-C-K.com, and click on Crime Cafe to check all that out. So now, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you, James DiBiasio. Yay. I think I got the name right. <laughs> uh, all nice right, you. excellent. Not everybody can do that. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I know it's it's an art. I mean, when you're married to an Italian, you can you can manage these things. Yeah, so you, know. you, saw, uh, you have to listen to a lot of Pavarotti and eat a lot of linguine. <laughs> Besides all that, yes, you've written two novels, and I am currently just plowing through uh, the first one. And uh, let me see if I'm pronouncing this correctly. Gaijin Cowgirl? Is that right? That's right. All right. Well, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And um, it just gets more exciting as it goes. Why don't you tell us about that book? And um, it really explores some fascinating issues. Yeah, so Gaijin Cowgirl. Uh, so Gaijin is a Japanese word for outsider or foreigner. Uh, and cowgirl is is ref refers to my my heroine uh, Val Benson, who is a beautiful but troubled American woman who's working in a Japanese hostess club, and her number one tipper is a, an old guy with um, with sinister hobbies and a map to stolen World War II gold, uh, and of course then it ensues into a big chase where Val has to get her hands on the gold before the bad guys do. But um, so Gaijin Cowgirl is a play. She works in a club called Cowboy. So she is, she becomes the, the outside cowgirl in Japan who uh, goes to this big adventure. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, did you do a lot of research before writing it? Because there's so much in there about Japanese history and. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I wrote that book actually quite a long time ago when I was spending a lot of time in Japan. Uh, I had the privilege for my job. Uh, I was able to, um, to, to spend uh, quite a lot of time in not just in Tokyo, but uh, also traveling around a little bit. Uh, and I'm a big reader. And I wrote that when I was still relatively new to living in Asia. I've been in Asia for over 20 years. Uh, and so, you know, everything's just amazing, right? And it's, you know, you're just going through this, you know, different places and you're, you're just kind of uh, gobsmacked by some of the cool stuff going on. Uh, but you also, you don't always know what's going on. I don't speak Japanese. So um, I read a lot. I read a lot about history. I read a lot about the culture, uh, the pop culture, the classic culture. Um, I eat a lot of the food. The food is amazing. Uh, and um, and, you tr and make friends, right? You make friends with, with uh, people who've been living there, uh, whether they're Japanese or they're foreigners, but they, they know the place. Uh, and, uh, and throughout of this sort of uh, this immersion, uh, I began getting ideas for stories and, um, and wanted to, you know, I was really interested in the culture there. It's a great place. And I wanted to set a story there. And it is a great place, but it's got a very dark side to its history, which mm -hmm. Americans kind of have a, have a clue about that. Um, and also American involvement in Japan after the war has a dark history too. So we, so I was very interested in um, not making this place exotic in a, um, in a, in a very Western view, point of view way. I wanted, you know, I'm not treating this place like they're, they're these cute or strange or weird people. They're just people, but they have a different way of seeing their world. Uh, 
And so I wanted to be faithful to and respectful of that at the same time, but also make sure I had lots of the cool, the cool stuff that makes it fun. That is cool. Um, that must have taken a lot of time to really immerse yourself and learn. Uh, the, you, well, I mean, you're there. Um, you're there for, for ver whatever purpose. And I didn't go there thinking, oh, I'm going to research a book and I have to do X, Y, and, and Z. Maybe toward the end, once I began writing a book, uh, I might then have an eye for particular details I'm looking for. But, um, but the, the idea of the book came out of the, just the stew of life, of being in, in different places. And then when you start writing the story, it naturally just, these experiences bubble up and that's where you want to go. Exactly, yeah. Traveling, uh, I would assume, sort of feeds into your inspiration, just the act of traveling itself. Sometimes, I think it's not just, I mean, tr there's, there's visiting like as a tourist, and then there's, I guess, I don't, this sounds snobby. I, I don't wanna say traveling like, oh, I'm a Mr. Superior guy. Um, but living in places uh, and getting to know them or spending mm -hmm. a lot of time there. And also um, a lot of my travel is for business. Uh, and so when you're on a business trip, you're not there going to um, look at the pretty building or go to the temple. Uh, you're there to talk to people in their, in their places of work or have drinks with them or after work. Uh, you're there to talk about their lives, their businesses, um, the problems they've got, what's going on. Uh, and, you know, you do that enough times uh, consistently and you end up with uh, a pretty good idea of what's going on in a place it's from one view, and then you've got to flesh that out if you want to make a novel out of it, and, and then you have to do more research. But you're, 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 you're thinking about these places from their perspective, I guess. And I'm mm -hmm. a journalist by, by, by daytime trade, so uh, it, it comes a little more naturally, I guess, that, that kind of perspective. But that, that learning and getting into a place, um, I've been very fortunate that my job has let me do that. That's great. That's, that's really fantastic. Uh, and the food how, is the best. Just uh, <laughs> wow, how cool. Um, how did you end up in Hong Kong? Uh, I mean, this, was, this had nothing to do with being a writer, aside from perhaps an interest in just getting exposure. I had been working in New York City, um, and I had done some, some studying in Europe, which was, and I, always, I thought I always wanted to go back abroad, and my company had an opportunity in Hong Kong. And I, you know, the idea was not to go and, and move to Hong Kong and stay there forever. The idea was two to three years and then go back to New York. Um, but opportunities here just really emerged. It, uh, I, I, my first year, I didn't really get it. I didn't feel very comfortable. Uh -huh. um, I kept comparing everything back to New York City, which is kind of, I think, a, a mental trap, but it's a, a normal one. Uh, and then I stopped, stopped doing that and looked at the place for its own good, bad, and uglies and decided that it's really cool. It is really cool. Uh, and, um, and so I ended up staying and one thing led to another and got married to a, a, a beautiful woman from here. So um, that's another reason to keep on. And, um, and then here we are 20 plus years later. Wow. Yeah. But I'm still, uh, I'm still I'm still a Philadelphia Eagles fan, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. I can, I can totally understand. I live in Maryland, but I'm still a New York uh, Mets fan. So, okay. respect. What can I say? I mean, I remember when they were terrible. So, <laughs> uh, tell us about your nonfiction book, the story of Angkor. Is that what it is? So, um, you you know, Tomb Raider. Uh, the temple uh, with the with sort of the, the strange Asian faces, uh, you know, that that's all inspired from um, a place called Angkor, which is in Cambodia, uh, mm -hmm. and it was an ancient city, a uh, huge ancient city built on on hydraulics and using a, um, a very interesting mix of, of Indian and Hindu and Buddhist mythology and cults, and. Um, and you can go visit these ruins. Um, the city emptied about six or 700 years ago, just completely emptied. Uh, it was abandoned. Uh, this gigantic, vast expanse of canals and, and, and temples and, 
and all kinds of stuff. And it gets millions of visitors every year. It's, it's just amazing. Uh, you go there and it's, these temples are just, they're, they're huge. They're, they're really, really big. And mm. uh, got these incredible, this incredible art and the way they're designed is you're just, you know, it's like something out of a, it really is that like you're in, in, in Tomb Raider, um, except you want to shoot all the tourists instead of the bad guys. Um, <laughs> Because uh, I, I mean, I'm a tourist myself, but um, uh, I got so fascinated by this and I, I love history. Um, and uh, I ended up, uh, I ended up taking down some notes uh, when I went with some friends uh, one year and um, I, I thought I'd be the tour guide. Um, and I got so interested and I started getting into this project um, and my notes became a little more than just notes on a, on a card. Uh, to try to explain what's going on. And before I knew it, I had enough material to start thinking about maybe I could do something here for people like me who like to visit a place and want to understand it. It's complicated. It's, it's hard to understand. It's so alien. But there's not much, there's a lot of books about the place. There are tour guides, there are photo books. Um, but you don't really want to read them, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> And I don't think anybody does. And then there's a lot of academic work, which is very knowledgeable, but it's super dry. I mean, you, you got to take the book and go. You know. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, um, so then I ended up getting, so here, here's the story of Angkor. Um, and uh, it's super thin. And I wanted it to be for people who aren't nerds, who are just um, really amazed by these temples and wanted to understand what, what's behind them and want to read something readable readable short readable punchy yeah exactly that's nice that's really cool you could so, be writing all sorts of tour guides for the various places that you've been you know um that one required deep deep that, that required a lot of uh, a lot of weekends and nights um i had to buy a lot of research material and books and stuff that was not a casual <laughs> once i got <laughs> in I realized how tough it was. It was um, uh, one of those projects where you wouldn't have done it if you'd realized how much work it was going to be. But <laughs> then you get to a point, you're like, well, that's it. but it, it got validated by some, some from very well-known scholars who, who edited it. And, uh, and, and so that gave me the confidence and, and the publisher as well to, to go ahead with it. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, your fiction, would you describe your fiction generally as thriller? Yeah, yeah. So I would definitely because okay. So I don't do like mystery. Mm -hmm. uh, mystery is a whodunit. You know, Correct. something happened in the past, and you want to find out the verdict. You want to understand. You know, un un unlock the secret and uh, and and hopefully bring the the, the villain to justice. Um, a thriller in my book is uh, you don't know what's going to happen next. Um, and, uh, and, and so I think that's, that's the, the genre that, that I'm in and uh, that I love and enjoy. I, I, I read mysteries, but I prefer thrillers. Well, I like, th I like both actually. So that's cool. Uh, what are you currently working on now? Um, I've been working on a, a series of in international espionage, a series in, in that, um, and uh, you and I were talking before we started recording a little bit about some of the, the pitfalls and travails of trying to be published and then things don't work out. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've got an agent, but we haven't been able to place it yet, but we're still working on a, a, a few things. So um, if it gets placed, then I'll go the conventional route. Uh, and if it does not, then I will, there's, there's many alternatives out there uh, from small digital publishers to going DIY. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Well, that's awesome. If it, if you're talking about spy thrillers, I'm in, man. So okay. I want to hear about this. <laughs> Keep me it's, not, it's, it's, it's still a long, you know, I mean, you know, it takes a long time for, uh, uh, for these things to come out. So I, I'm oh, yeah. But, um, but, but in terms of, you're talking about, do I write thrillers? So Gaijin Cowgirl, which is, this is the one you referenced. This is the one you're, you're reading now. Um, this is more of like an epic, it's a thriller in its structure and hopefully it's pacing, but it's also a, like a big adventure story. Um, and then the, my other one is, uh, this is called Bloody Paradise, um, which is, I 
call it like a tropical noir. It's set on a beautiful resort island in Thailand where an American guy who's in finance rocks up with a broken hand, a bag full of cash, and a pissed off gangster on his tail. Um, he, there he meets Maisie, a, a yoga instructor, and things just go downhill from there. So um, uh, that's, the, that, that's the oeuvre right now. That's the stuff out on Amazon and, and, uh, and so on. Well, it's all very cool. And um, since you wrote about Thailand, I have to ask you, do you know Tim Hallinan? Uh, I don't, uh, although I've heard the name. He uh, writes about Thailand also. He has yeah. a series with, um, I'm trying to think of the name. Junior Bender is the one in California. The yeah. one in Thailand is Pope Rafferty. Yeah, I've heard of the series. I haven't actually got around to reading it. There's actually, um, there's a little bit of a scene in Bangkok. Um, I've met some of these guys. Uh, there, is a, there is a scene there. In fact, my, the publisher of Gaijin Cowgirl, um, those guys spend a lot of time in Bangkok. Um, mm -hmm. that's, um, they're two um, European uh, gents who, um, who travel all over the place, but um, that seems to be their, their home base. Um, so uh, yeah, there's, a, there's an interesting scene in, in Thailand. Bangkok is a, a gritty city um, with, a, with a very Laosh reputation. Um, and uh, so there's, there's no end to, uh, uh, you know, we talked about, um, we write about noir. Well, a lot of parts of Southeast Asia are noir every day. So huh. there's no material. Yeah, I can just imagine. Well, um, is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? Um, I guess uh, I want to thank you for, um, for giving me a, a little time on your show. Um, and there's a couple of writers who are sort of in my, my age group, my peer set, uh, who I don't know personally, but who I've come across through some of these other networks who I like. Um, and uh, hopefully at some point, I know you're, you're heavily booked, but um, I thought their books were really good. Um, there's a woman named Elka Ray, who's a Canadian living in Vietnam, um, and she writes uh, in the same book series, the same publishing group that did Gaijin Cowgirl. She's got one called Saigon Dark. It's really good. I recommend people check it out. Um, and then there's two, a uh, couple guys in the U.S. who, again, I've never met them, uh, but um, I, I thought they're interesting writers um, in the crime space. Um, Greg Barth does these grindhouse, really egregiously violent stories, uh, which are just pure candy. Um, and uh, and Eric Pruitt is kind of like doing Southern Gothic stuff, um, and he. He's crime, but he, he does um, a, a more a small, a small town kind of look at things. Um, and he's got, you know, these amazing characters um, and, and a real voice. So there are just a few other authors out there I wanted to, to give a shout out to because um, we all need to, uh, uh, you know, help each other out, I think, uh, until one of us becomes super famous and then we can ignore every, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, amen to helping others out. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it's funny you should mention Elka Ray because she's going to be the next guest on my show. Okay, that's great. Um, I've never met that's her. That's a real know. nice segue. <laughs> okay, perfect. So I'm sure maybe maybe she's a horrible, horrible person uh, when you when you first. I, I doubt know. it. <laughs> but her, book was, had... her book was great. Her book was really good. Well, fantastic. That's awesome. Yep. Um, I have never had a horrible experience with any author on this show. I have to tell you, everybody has been so cool. And thank you so much for being here. Um, the pleasure of having you on is all mine. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. And thanks for um, tuning in, everybody. Remember that uh, we have the Crime Cafe uh, nine book set and short story anthology links to where you can buy it on my website debbiemack.com as well as the patreon campaign uh, where you can get access to all sorts of goodies in addition to everything we're offering to our supporters so that's it for now and on that note be good and see you in two weeks happy reading